Today we are discussing monumental reforms of 1909. It's a very important topic as far as uh, past papers are concerned. We have seen it coming repeatedly in various forms. At times, several seven marks questions come from this topic, and at times it is also a part of a 14 marks question. Now, first of all, we'll discuss about the reasons why monumental reforms were introduced. Don't uh, get confused if you get a question on Indian Council Act of 1909 because this is just another name for monumental reforms. It was an act, it was a law passed by British for India, that is why it is known as Indian Council Act as well. Now, as I was already telling you, first of all, we'll discuss the reasons why monumental reforms were introduced. Number one reason was that both the Secretary of uh, State, uh, Lord Morley, and the Viceroy, Lord Minto, both of them were supporting Muslims at that time. Why? Because they had considered Muslims to be an important nation of India, along with Hindus. Secondly, they were also uh, um, uh, taking Muslims as uh, an option to rise against the increasing power of Hindus. As Congress was supporting Hindus a lot and uh, they also did not want to pressurize Congress and Hindus directly. So they wanted to please Muslims and gain their support in the affairs. So, instead of dealing with Congress directly and take strong measures against Congress, they formed certain laws which will automatically kind of weaken Congress power a bit. Why? Because Congress was emerging out as a strong political opposition against the British. And it was the only way to deal with this increasing power to introduce certain rules and laws which will uh, kind of decrease this increasing power of the Congress. So introducing the reforms was a more effective way to uh, deal with co Congress. These reforms, they tried to satisfy all the communities of India through these reforms. So that is why they kept it in their hand and formulated certain rules which would please even the minorities of India including Muslims. Again Liberal Party that had taken over um, in Britain in 1906 wanted more power to be given to uh, Hindus and Muslims like Indians uh, because they believed in giving rights to all the people uh, equally. So that is why more privileges uh, were to be expected in these reforms um, and that is why Liberal government asked the Viceroy to give such rules to the country which would not only please Muslims who were already pleased after since the uh, you know partition of Bengal and uh, the Shimla deportation but also to pacify the Hindus who had become furious as a result of partition of Bengal and again Shimla deputation. Then Swadeshi movement was the biggest, biggest threat to the British. Why? Because in Swadeshi movement, the Hindus, they had clearly threatened the British to stop using the British products and to stop obeying the British commands. Now, the British knew that uh, if the Hindus would not be using their products, then it's going to give a big blow to their business and trade. So, these reforms were introduced to please the Indians as such to support British in governing the state of affairs. Now, what were these reforms actually? They suggested in these reforms that seats in imperial councils will be increased by 60 members. Now, who are going to be these 60 members? The Indians. 
Now, the, by, the, in, by Indians, I mean both Hindus and Muslims. Similarly, 60 members were to be uh, included extra in Central Executive Council, but their position in the council was advisory only. Then, provincial councils uh, in large provinces were to increase 50 seats and smaller provinces were to increase 30 seats. Muslims were given the right of separate electorate and weightage and then they also announced elections to be conducted at a higher level, for example, at university level as well. Apparently, these reforms are showing you that representation of Indians had increased at all levels. Now, at a higher level in the Imperial Council and Executive Central Council, we can see that a good number of 60 uh, uh, seats had been increased for the Indians. Similarly, in provinces, 50 and 30 seats had been increased. But here, one point needs to be kept in mind that all these members had only advisory power in the assemblies. Means they were not actually responsible or they did not have authority to pass the rules and regulations. They could advise during discussions to pass certain rule, but they actually did not have that power of passing the rules as such. Now, what can you expect? What kind of reaction would have come from these reforms? We'll uh, discuss it later, but before that, let's see what importance do these reforms have. These reforms, they actually, as I already told you, they had more say to the Indians, but no power. And British, they did not want the locals to have power to change the law. Now, uh, as I was earlier talking about the reaction, what do you think the reaction would be? Well, the Muslims, they were really very happy at that time. Why? Because they had actually gained their political rights of separate electorate and weightage. Earlier on, it was a verbal promise made on part of the Viceroy. But now, they had legally got this power. And it had also strengthened the two-nation theory because the British had accepted them as separate nation and were dealing them as a separate nation against the Hindus. Again, why the Muslims were happy over these uh, uh, reforms? Because they were politically Im immature at that time. At that time, they were just happy that they had got these rights and they were also happy over the fact that the uh, seats have been increased in the council. They were not mature enough to figure out that actually they did not have say in decision making. On the other hand, if we see Hindus, the Hindus, they rejected uh, these uh, reforms and they did as they thought that they did not have enough say in the constitution making. Then the, uh, you know, rights given to the Muslims, they were also a threat to them and they called it as undemocratic and extra favor given to them. In 1910, Congress held a meeting and they demanded that the right of separate electorate, it should be replaced by joint electorate because they did not want certain seats to be fixed for the Muslims. As it clear cut gave them an idea that those seats are definitely going to be attained by the Muslims and in this way, they would start getting uh, some kind of, uh, you know, power to represent the Muslim community in the parliament, in the assembly, in the council against the Hindus. Then there was no mention of self-rule or Swaraj in these reforms for which Congress had been fighting now. Now here I would like to tell you that at this point the motive of both the political parties, uh, All India Muslim League and Indian National Congress were really very different. Muslim League was, uh, you know, following the concept or motive of loyalty towards the British, while Congress, it was uh, following the 